Hey guys, welcome back to another 3D printing video. And today we're gonna to be checking out Creality's Cure and Wash Station, the model name of UW-01. So in this video, we're gonna unbox it, set it up, and process the models. Hopefully you guys enjoy the video. Let's get started. Alright, so this is Creality's version of the wash and cure, so I'm pretty excited to see how it's put together and works. I do like Creality products quite a bit, and most of their stuff is a very good value for what you get. So this is the box it comes in, the size of the package, which is 30 by 30 by 50, and the shipping label says 13 pounds. Alright, so from my experience, opening resin printers and things like this is best from the bottom. We can see Creality is using the soft black foam. And this is how it comes packed. And on the very top, we got a layer with a few things in here. So we got a user manual, a box here with a power adapter, and it is 24 volts, 2.5 amps, and also the cord for the power brick. And we do have a pretty long reach. So on the top here we have, looks like a steel plate, and it's literally a piece of metal, and it's got like a little fitting on the back of it. And I'm guessing this is the turntable. And it is also a mirror finish, so you guys can see. All right. So it looks like the whole machine here is in a plastic bag. So let's go ahead and flip it around. We'll take the bottom layers off. There's another layer here. All right. So it looks like there's a lot of stuff packed inside. We got this enclosure lid here and it's like an orangey color. And the reason it's this color is because it helps prevent UV rays of getting in or getting out of the machine. So there's a little more foam. Looks like we have some tools and a bearing, an extra part looks like. We got the basket here and inside the basket we got more foam. And in there we got some kind of bracket. So this looks like some kind of attachment to something. And also another kind of bracket. Yeah, pretty interesting. And this is the basket itself. So as you guys can see, it's not very deep, kind of shallow somewhat, but technically should be more than enough for most things. And you guys can see it's pretty big volume here. So. All right, now here we have the container. And there's actually more foam in here. And inside the container, you guys can see that we have a propeller and it does spin up and there's a little guard right on top of it. On the bottom of the container, we can see there's a couple magnets there. And this is how the machine is able to spin the propeller. It's a magnetic coupling between the base and the container. And it does come with a nice heavy duty lid that's sealed with a nice gasket. And just clipped together. So yeah, and that looks like it's everything here. So the main machine here is all metal. Right in the middle here, we have a rotating shaft that this rotating plate actually clips into or slides into like that. So overall a washing cure machine is actually quite simple to use and it's really not that complicated and we're gonna go through the full process here so you guys can see how everything works. But let's go ahead and grab our manual and in there we also get a thank you card and after sales card. So let's see what this manual looks like here. So yeah here we have the parameters, all the parts included and how to use the machine. So Creality does very well with their manuals so it's quite simple to understand here. So on step three here, it shows us what that bracket is for. It looks like it's to hold the build plate, this one here, and you can adjust it higher and lower. And it simply just slides in right into here, just like that. So this is an adjustable one. But you can see you can go lower and higher depending on you know what model you got in there. So the idea here is when you're done printing, you can connect it to this and that's how you dunk it into the solution. So this is quite an interesting design choice here. And this other bracket also serves the same purpose. It goes right in here. But yeah, we're gonna go through all this here in a second, guys. So let's take a closer look at the machine. So this is what the top looks like, and this is where the rotating plate goes in. We got our LEDs here, the mount. On the back, we can see there's some kind of heat sink with exhaust port. Looks like an optical sensor there. So if you open the lid, everything turns off. Our power input port, the manufacturing label. We got venting on the left side. And same thing on the right. The bottom's pretty clean. There's some venting here and rubber feet 
on four corners. So on the front here, we have all of our controls. Let's go ahead and peel this protective layer here. So we got our power button and then we got the function buttons with information. Now one thing that's a little bit strange is that it is in dual languages. English and Chinese looks like. I don't mind it too much but I wish it was just the English language. I guess they got to streamline these things. So here we have the mode button. This is where we're going to select between cure and wash. The speed button. We got quick, normal and slow. The time button here and the start and pause button with an on and off switch here. So yeah overall pretty simple machine and quite lightweight also and not complicated to use at all so let's go ahead and plug it in into the wall so i do like how long the cable is that's nice let's go ahead and hit the power button all right it does power on and it does have a really nice bright red display on the numbers there so let's go ahead and set this wash bucket over it and by the way it is magnetic i can feel the magnets pulling it in and you can kind of see the propeller inside there turning so I'm curious to see if it's going to let us run it without the lid. So it is on wash right now. Click it. We can change that between wash and cure. And then the speed. We got quick, normal, and slow. Let's go to normal here. The time is set on two minutes automatically. Let's see if we click it. Okay. It just cycles through a different time. And it goes all the way to 60 here. 70, 80. Keeps going. Okay. And then 90 was the highest. And it looks like you just have to cycle through it to get to the time you want. Almost wish they would have put an up and down button for that. So now we just push play and it should start, but it doesn't because the lid's not on. So let's grab the lid and put it over the machine. So now it should start up. And sure enough, there it goes. And I don't know if you guys can see, but the propeller is spinning up or spun up in there. Let's see if we can change this on the fly. Yeah, okay, you can. So it's slowing down. It's actually quite slow at the slow rate and then quick. Yeah, it's pretty quick. So quick and medium seems to spin it pretty quick and then the slow really spins it slow. So, And we can see the countdown here. So once it counts down, it's going to stop. But obviously we can pause it and it'll stop and then continue it. Now another way it's going to stop is that if we take the lid off, it's going to know and it stops. So Secure, you're going to do the same thing. You're just going to use this rotating plate, put your model on it, close the lid. Turn it to cure mode, two minutes, and then push play. And then our ultraviolet lights will come on and our turntable is spinning, which is on quick. Let's see if we can slow it down. So yeah, you can control how fast it turns with the speed button here. So I'm kind of curious if you can add time as it's working. Let's see. No, it doesn't let you do anything. So I guess if you pause it. Okay, now you can add time if you pause it. And continue so yeah it seems to work very well and it's quite intuitive not too hard to figure out so i'm going to go ahead and stop this and i want to show you guys that we are printing a model over there on the creality ld 002 h so this is a monochrome printer also and we're printing an eiffel tower to process it in the washing cure so if you guys are interested in that printer i did a review on it so check that out it's a great resin printer being monochrome which is absolutely what you want these days and creality made it a pretty great value and you guys can see that they have a very similar design language so they're a pretty good pair together now the tops are not the same color the printer itself has more of a red but other than that the base itself looks very similar All right, so nine hours later and our Eiffel Tower is done. Now, before we do anything, there's a few things that you guys should know that's quite important concerning health and the emissions that these things have. With resin, obviously, you know, you know, you need ventilation and plus you need protection like gloves not to get it on your skin. With the washing clean, you also have similar requirements because you are dealing with alcohol and alcohol is very evaporative and, you know, can stink up pretty fast. So you want to be really careful of breathing too much of that. So ventilated area is very very important and also wear protective gear like a mask and gloves all right with that out of the way let's go ahead take this lid off and we'll remove the plate and set our container on top here let's pull the lid off 
Now with this washing cure, it looks like you don't use the lid at all as you're washing it because it actually doesn't even fit in there the way it's designed. So you only need the lid to store it away if you want to keep, you know, your alcohol in here as you continue to use it. So as you guys probably guessed, you will need <laughs> alcohol. And I have three bottles here and these are actually not brand new. I have recycled them so they're not completely clear, but I'm using it as much as I can. So on the container itself, there's markings here in milliliters and these are about a thousand millimeters each a little less and our 3000 mark is right here so three of these bottles will only get us to here which i think is enough for our model but we'll see maybe not so let's go ahead and fill it up so keep in mind guys that you will need a lot of alcohol so if you buy a washing cure machine don't forget to get alcohol all right, so we're actually right at the 3000 milliliters there. So I'm gonna go ahead and put on the gloves. Now there's a couple ways that you can use this wash and cure, which the first way is you can put things in the basket and then the basket goes into the alcohol. And by the way, there are some tabs here that the top handle goes into, just like that so it doesn't move around. And you guys can see our basket is completely under the alcohol. So 3000 milliliters is perfect for that. So if you wanted to break the models loose and then throw them in here, you could do that. And also the basket is good for washing the parts off of the printer. Or we can use this bracket here that sits right here and holds our build plate. So I'm going to try to use the bracket and I don't think we need the basket if we're going to do that. So I'm going to move it out of the way for now. So let's go ahead and cut our model loose from the printer. Slide the plate out. So it looks like they're expecting you to use this knob here from the printer to actually connect to the bracket, which would have been nice if they included an extra knob. Now technically you don't even have to tighten it, it seems to sit there either way, but so now we can adjust this thing and tighten it up when we get the right elevation. And so if you guys maybe can see kind of, the model is starting to shed the extra resin off of it already. Now our alcohol doesn't go all the way to the plate since we got a pretty tall model, so we probably need to add a little more alcohol. And luckily I do have a little bit more, so let's go ahead and add that. All right, and that covers our build plate really good. So it's gonna get washed at the same time with the model. So let's go ahead and start it up. I'm gonna go to wash and we'll do normal for five minutes, I think should be plenty and push start. Okay, and it doesn't start. And that's because we need our lid. So let's push start now. And there it goes. So it's twirling the alcohol around in there and dissolving it from the model. So now we just need to wait four more minutes and it will be done. Okay guys, so at the four minute mark, it actually reversed its orientation. It stopped and went the other way. So every minute it changes direction of which way it spins. All right, and it is finished. So we can go ahead and pull it out. Now I got this little rag here that we can work on. So let's pull it up. I'll let the alcohol drain a bit. So for the next part, we just need to remove the model from the plate. And I'm just gonna use a spatula to try to break it loose. Now this part's a little bit hard. Sometimes the models stick a little better than you'd want them. All right, and the Eiffel Tower is off. So let's take it off this bracket. And it looks like our feet kind of broke off here. Yeah, I didn't do a very good job getting this off. But this is quite a fragile model and I think I might have been a little too close to the bed. But in any case, it is off now. So this build plate here is pretty much clean since it's been in the alcohol. But I'm just gonna rinse it off real quick to make sure we got everything. And I'm just gonna wipe it down. And now it's clean, ready for the next print. So after you wash your model, naturally you want to go ahead and cure it, but that's not a good idea because you want all of the liquid alcohol that still hasn't dried yet to naturally air dry because if you don't let it air dry and you start curing it right away, it's going to form like these white spots and it's like a burn basically, alcohol burn. So you want to leave this just air drying anywhere in the shade, not outside in the sun or anything like that. So you don't want to expose it to UV rays, you just want to naturally evaporate the remaining alcohol that's on there. So we're just going to set this to let it dry. And while the model is drying, we can go ahead and clean the printer since we're not gonna print anymore. And so the first thing to do is to drain the leftover resin back into the bottle. And we're gonna use a strain filter for that because we don't want to contaminate the good resin. So let's remove the tub. And we're just gonna simply pour the resin through the filter into the bottle. Pretty simple process. 
So depending how patient you are, you can, you know, get as many drops out as you want. But I think that's good right there for us. So let's go ahead and close this bottle. So now we can put this whole tub into the wash to wash off the rest of the resin. I'm not sure if it's going to fit in the basket. Let's see. No, it does not. Upright it will, but that's probably not enough solution there to make it work. Yeah, we'll have to have it pretty much all the way full. So I'm just going to lay it in there the way it is. Well, actually guys, it doesn't even fit in there because of these knobs. So I guess either way it has to go in like this. But yeah, we can just set it in there, run it for two minutes, flip it around, and then run it for another two minutes, and that should clean it up really good. We're going to put our lid on before we can start it. Hit the start. Let's flip it around. Put the lid back on, and start it for another two minutes. All right. So this thing should be really clean. So all we got to do is just wipe it off and it's ready for next time's use. So yeah guys, you can see how convenient it is when you have all the right tools and the cleanup process is very simple. And now since we're done with the wash, we can go ahead and take the whole container off, put our lid back on. And now we have a whole tub of alcohol that's ready to use for the next time around. And you can keep cleaning models in here, you know, until it gets to the point where it's too cloudy and, you know, too diluted. And usually you can process about 30 to 50 models, depending on what kind and how much, you know, resin goes into it, the alcohol. But yeah, it's pretty economical overall. And as you guys see, it makes life really easy. All right, so our next stage is curing. We're going to put the rotating plate back on. Then we're going to grab our model, overall pretty dry. And we're going to set it on the plate, put our lid on, change it to cure, and we'll set the timer to 10 minutes and the rotation to slow, since we don't want it to really rotate fast, and we'll start it. And there we go. And as you guys can see, even at slow, it still rotates pretty quick. So the UV lights there in the back are curing the model and the mirror on the plate you know is bouncing the light everywhere so it can cure it you know from every direction so the fans do kick up when it's in uv mode so it is a little bit louder but it's not bad so yeah now we just gotta wait till it cures and that'll be the whole process of this wash and cure and as you guys saw there it's not very complicated quite simple to use overall quite intuitive just keep in consideration the safety and this makes resin printing a lot more enjoyable and not only that guys we're gonna see here in a second up closer of what the eiffel tower looks like and it's quite remarkable what a washing cure does to a model compared to not having it. All right. So the model should be pretty dry now. Yeah, it feels completely dry and looks dry. So yeah, it looks like it did a really good job in curing it. So let's take a closer look at the model here. And this is what makes the washing cure very well worth the process, you know, not including how convenient it is, is that it makes all your models very detailed. So if you guys look at the individual braces and the railing, it's quite incredible how detailed this Eiffel Tower is. I can tell you guys from experience printing quite a few things that it never looks this good no matter how you try to process it yourself. And if we look all the way up here where it's super fine, it's very detailed and quite amazing how such small things can, you know, still retain their definition. So you guys can see here at the very tip how thin that is and how much detail is in there. In any case, it's a very impressive result to say the least. So to conclude, if you are doing resin printing and you don't have a cured wash, you're really missing out on the full experience, not only print quality, but also the ease of use. So if you don't have one yet, I would definitely recommend to give it a shot and I'm sure you'll never go back after that. In any case, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this review of Creality's wash and cure station, the UW-01. So if you want to pick up this model for yourself, I'll have some links in the description. And if you enjoyed this video, then hit that like button. And if you want to see more 3D printing stuff, check out my playlist and also stay tuned for more videos. I do have more printers coming up. So as always, guys, thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.